This is Father Jim Corda. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's. Today is the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father Matthew. Please stand. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and the refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation, over all the earth. Oh, bless the Lord, highest heavens above. Bless the Lord, glorify his name. Sun in the day, moon and stars in the night, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord. The God of our salvation, rock of strength and the refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation, over all the earth. Let all the earth sing with joy to the Lord, all the seas, creatures of the deep. Mountain and hills, bring them beasts of the fields, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and a refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation, over all the earth. Good morning. We welcome all of you who are in our chapel here at St. Paul Monastery and those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Today we gather for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. So we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man calls the Lord heard and from all his distresses he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste 
taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reveling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God forgave you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and love live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. This bread will live forever. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, this week, we ask you for your prayers for our congregation. We are having our regional assembly this week here in Canfield. This afternoon, our members from the Staten Island community will be arriving, and we will be in prayer and reflection and discussion throughout this week, uh, setting up a program, a uh, plan of action that we're going to do for the next three years. And Brother Marco is our new regional superior, and then we will elect two of us that will be his counselor to help give them some guidance and counseling over the next three years. So please keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we begin the process tomorrow. In the church, 
Today is also the feast of St. Dominic, so we want to remember Brother Dominic, who is behind the scenes, uh, directing us from downstairs in the studio. You might see him running around before and after the Mass, but during the Mass we usually don't see him, so we wish him a very happy feast day, as well as all our Brother Dominicans that are at St. Dominic and in this country and around the world. So we pray for all of them on this, their feast day. I'd like to reflect upon the journey of life that all of us take from the moment of conception to our moment of death, because our readings give us some reflection on what tools we should use on this journey of ours. We come to our first reading about the prophet Elijah who is running and is resting under a tree and he tells the Lord that this journey is, is really too much for him and he really would like to end his life. So we need to reflect upon the journey that Elijah has taken. Elijah was called by God, and the first thing he went is to the people of Israel and say, you guys are not following God in your life, and so therefore you're going to have a famine for three years. Wonderful news for people who want to hear about a prophet from the Lord. Well, then his next thing he did is he took on the priest of the god Baal in a big battle that we all have read in the history of the Old Testament, and they were trying to get a sacrifice and be burned, and nothing happened. Elijah by himself came out and got the fire to the Lord, and this inflamed all the people that they overran and killed all the priests of the god Baal. Well, then this made Queen Jezebel, who was one who supported Baal, very mad and upset. So she put a bounty on Elijah, and this is where we find him this morning, as he's running away, and he says, this is not really the happy life of a prophet. But the Lord gives him what? Some food and sustenance and tells him that now he is strengthened for the journey then to go to Mount Horeb, which is basically Mount Sinai, which is the place that he can find the Lord and it strengthens him to, to continue to come on. Eventually what we'll see because of his own journey, he will also see and experience rain clouds that will come and will end that drought, end that famine that was in the country for three years in order to show that the Lord had mercy on his people. And so on our journey, we are knowing that the Lord provides us the food that we need. In today's gospel, he tells us that he is the bread of life. And you're going to hear the bread of life over the next several Sundays because it's a long chapter in the gospel of John. Because in the gospel of John, when you go to the Last Supper, there is no Eucharistic purpose of the Last Supper. And the other ones you have do this in remembrance of me. He offers the bread and the wine and says, it's my body and blood. But in the Gospel of John, what do you have? It is washing the feet of one another, caring for one another, looking after one another. And so his Eucharistic discourse that he says is the bread of life is the purpose for that section in the Gospel of John. And so we are reminded that the Lord is the bread of life and gives us the sustenance. So I'll be repeating some of the things I said last week. One of the ways that we are nurtured by the Lord is in his word. So we need to read the word of God. We need to meditate upon it. And you should be carrying the gospel or part of the scriptures with you. Maybe you got your Magnificat. Maybe you got us give us this day. Maybe you have the word of God among us. Or maybe you have some other tool. Maybe you have an app on your cell phone or on your tablet that will show you how to read and meditate upon the Word of God. I always think of one of these times that I had a lady come into our bookstore and she said, Father, I'd like to have a nice Bible that I can carry in my purse. And I said, great. So I went and showed her all the ones that would fit in her purse and she goes, but I'd like to have giant type. And I says, well, I can't give you giant type and a book and a small thing that's going to fit into your purse. I said, I can give you smaller type, but at least you're carrying the word of God with her. So I think she accepted that either she bought the bigger one and couldn't carry in her purse or she did buy the small one. But it's good to carry the word of God with us and read it and meditate upon it. Many people have asked me, Father, can I have a copy of your homily? And as you can see, I don't have a copy of my homily, so I can't give you anything. Rarely do I have something written down. If it is, it's very brief notes. And the reason I don't is because I like to remain open to the Spirit, because if we're on our journey with the Lord, every time we read the Word of God every three years on this given Sunday, your life has changed. 
or just think of what happened since last year. Where were we? We weren't here. We were at home and we were other places reading the word of God and the whole life was changed. And so we allow that word to be active in our life. The second thing we are called to do is receive the, the body and blood of Jesus Christ or receive Holy Communion that makes us the body of Christ, makes us the church. And so we like to come as often as we can. Again, we have Mass here every day. We invite you to come and join us for Mass to receive uh, the body of Christ or at least every Sunday we're glad to have you. We're also very blessed that we have the Blessed Sacrament in our small chapel and, and sometimes you can go throughout the day and see some of our priests and brothers in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament because it is there that we are nurtured, it is there that we are encouraged. I think another thing that we have as our tool on our journey and our relationship with the Lord is reading the catechism. So you should have a catechism somewhere in your home and maybe you can carry that with you and there may be an app out there that goes through it or makes you read about it every day because it reflects upon the creed, which we're gonna say in a few moments, what we believe, what we profess, why is our teaching of the church. And so it goes through all those statements and what it means for us. It goes through the 10 commandments. What do those 10 commandments mean for us? It goes through our sacraments. What are those seven sacraments and how we can get the grace of God in our life? It looks at the Our Father and all the prayers that we are doing. So the Catechism is a good book that we need to read again and again to understand our teaching so that we can share it with one another. And if anything, read or watch the um, uh, Bishop Robert Barron's Catholicism series that teaches uh, about the Catechism and teaches about the teaching that we uh, have, because these are the tools that we need to share the Gospel message with one another. And finally, I'd like to speak about Viaticum. Now, viaticum, in a secular standpoint, the definition is tools and things that you bring on your journey. So technically, whenever we go on a journey, we are bringing viaticum with us. Now, in the Catholic Church, viaticum is holy communion we give to someone who is preparing for their death. It comes along with the sacrament of the anointing. So we bring the anointing for those who need healing, those who are preparing for surgery, those who may be preparing for death. And if they're getting to that point where they know that uh, they're approaching their final days, months, years, whatever, we can give them viaticum. We give them the blessed sacrament. We give them the body of Christ. And this is a wonderful sacrament. It's a wonderful ceremony. And I invite you to consider that when you have members of your family or your friends who are are approaching their death and they're very uh, still conscious of what they're doing, have the Vatican, have the, the people gathered around, have the family members, a great blessing, a great grace that is there for all of us. Don't wait until the person goes into a coma, then it's too late for them to receive the body and blood of Christ. And so this is a way that we prepare on our journey. So as we go through the journey of life, read the word of God, receive the body and blood of Christ in communion, reflect upon the catechism, have Vatican and the anointing as part of our our life and then truly we are joined with our Lord Jesus Christ on this journey of life. Let us stand and offer our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Standing in the Lord's presence, we place our trust in God as we call to mind our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that we will find nourishment and sustenance, sustenance in Christ, the, the bread of life for our daily journey and the fulfillment for all the hungers and yearnings of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the transformation of our minds and our hearts, that the Holy Spirit will free us from all bitterness and anger and guide us in living as children of God each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the homebound, that the Lord will protect them, renew their spirits, restore them to wholeness, strengthen all caregivers, and remember his promise, I am always with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an end to the pandemic, that God will curtail this virus, heal those infected, and give strength and courage to all who care for the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the gift of peace, that God will impel leaders to a deeper dialogue that will promote safety and development for all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray this Mass, let us remember Ruth McNeil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Brother Dominic and all the Dominicans on this their feast day, that the spirit of St. Dominic and the Holy Spirit will inspire their lives and ministries, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and merciful God, help us each day to live our lives generously, willingly passing on your grace to the people in our lives as we humbly express our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of mercy, holy mystery, ever faithful one, you have pitched your tent among us, reconciling love, heart and mind of Christ, live within our lives, form us into and grace. You have called us each by name in your great compassion, encompassing our failings with mercy. God of mercy, lead us. God of mercy, holy mystery, ever faithful one. You have pitched your tent among us, reconciling love, heart and mind of Christ. Live within our lives, form us into people of mercy and grace. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle St. Paul, St. Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our act of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
a place at your table, a place at your table to bring liberty to the captives and sight to all who are blind. We are sent in love, in power. and the hungry can feast by love we're invited here mercy prevails god in your goodness we share a place at your table a place at your table here in your presence the greatest are least the burden find rest and the hungry can feast by love we're invited here mercy prevails god in your goodness we share a place at your table a place at your table Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery, as well as those joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. I thank our musicians, I thank our reader, and thank all of you for being with us today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of day. Come then, all you nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name.